Hello YouTube and welcome to the PTG Rail German signalling tutorial. I first wanted to make this video a couple of months ago but trying to plan just how to structure the video actually took quite a lot of time so I kept ending up putting it off and putting it off. I'm now happy to say that the video is now complete and so it's now on YouTube and I do hope that it helps you out in trying to understand the German signalling system. The German signalling system involves advanced technology which can seem very complicated and daunting at first glance. There is a lot to learn, but once you've mastered it then it's actually a very rewarding experience to use in-game. There are two main signalling systems on German routes. The first is the PZB system, and this is on all routes since the release of the Munich to Augsburg route back in 2013, I think it was. So the PZB system is used only for trains travelling at up to speeds of 160 km per hour, which is 100 miles per hour. For speeds above that, there is another signalling system called LZB, which is used, and we're going to take a look at both of these systems in this video. The first thing that we're going to do is look inside the cab of a German locomotive to demonstrate the various safety systems and controls which have been implemented and which are very pertinent to the use of the signalling system. After that we're going to take a look at some of the key signals and trackside signs and then I'm going to demonstrate how we would respond to these signals when we're driving along inside the cab. The first safety system that we're going to look at is the CIFA system, which loosely translated means safety driving switch. The CIFA system acts very much like the driver safety device on British trains, and it is actually a foot pedal which the driver has to keep his foot on and then lift it up and push his foot back down again after a certain period of time. So CIFA in German locomotives is indicated by this light on the dashboard here which is illuminated when the CIFA system is deactivated. So what I'm going to do now is press shift and enter and then you will see the CIFA light go out. And so now that I've done that the CIFA system is activated and when the train is moving every 30 seconds the CIFA system will activate the alarm. Initially when it activates the light which you've just seen go out will come on for 4 seconds with no audible sound at all. If after 4 seconds you have not reset the CIFA system by pressing the enter on the numpad of the keyboard an audible alarm will then sound. After another two and a half seconds, if you still haven't reset the CIFA system at that point, the emergency brakes will then be applied and the train will have to come to a stop before you can release the brakes. The next system we're now going to look at is the AFB control, which acts very much like cruise control when we're travelling under PZB signalling, but actually behaves quite differently when it's activated under the LZB signalling, as I will demonstrate further along in this video. So to activate the AFB system, you just need to press Y RFB. to increase the speed set. RFB. And now you can see the little bug on the outside of the speedometer is climbing. So if we wanted to do 60 km per hour, I would put the bug at 60 km per hour. And then the train will generally maintain us at a speed of around four to well three to four kilometers per hour slower than the speed which we have set it to. We're now going to take a look at the signalling system. So to activate the signalling system, we need to press Control and Numpad Enter. And once I do, you will notice that the 85 lamp has illuminated in front of me, indicating that the signalling system is now activated. The 85 lamp indicates the type of train that we are, which is a Type O train, which is a passenger train. If the 70 lamp was illuminated, that would mean that we were a Type M train, or a faster freight. And if the 55 lamp was illuminated, that would mean that we were a Type U train, which is a slow or heavy freight. It all depends on the braking capability of that particular train, and each one has different rules when approaching red signals, though this video will primarily be focusing on the rules for passenger trains. Just below that you can also see the 1000 Hz light and the 500 Hz light. We won't need to use them right now, but I will mention them and go through what they do when I demonstrate approaching signals a little further in the video. 
Now we need to look at the controls for the signalling system, which are these three controls here, just to quickly go through them from right to left. So on the right here we have the PZB Acknowledge button, which is where we acknowledge signal alarms, and that is operated with the Page Down key on the keyboard. Next to that is the PZB Release button, which is operated by pressing End on the keyboard. And then next to that on the left we have the PZB Override button, which is operated by Delete on the keyboard. I'll go through exactly how each of these work in a minute as we're driving and I demonstrate what we do at signals. So the next thing we're going to do before looking at signals is just have a quick look at the trackside signs that you'll see in Germany. I won't go through all of the trackside signs but certainly the important ones just so you know what they mean and what they stand for and how to uh, respond to them when driving a train. White boards with black numbers on them are permanent speed restrictions, so these are the speed limit boards. In Germany, what you need to do is take the number written on the board and times it by 10 to get the speed limit. In this case, the number 12 is written on the board, so if we times that by 10, then the speed limit here is 120 kilometers per hour. Triangular boards which can be pointing either up or down are speed limit warning boards, so in this case they're warning that there is an upcoming permanent speed restriction of 60 km per hour. The three signs that you can see here, the first with three stripes, the second with two and the last with one stripe, are distance markers to the upcoming signal. The closest one with three stripes is placed 250 metres before the signal. The following sign is at 175 metres before the signal. And the final marker with the one stripe is at 100 metres before the signal. The H sign in platforms is the halt sign and what it means is that trains coming into the stations should stop by this marker. However, depending on the length of the train, sometimes I feel that the marker is in slightly the wrong place to where you would expect the train to stop. So if it was, say, a particularly short train, I may actually stop a bit before the marker, closer to where the train would likely stop in real life. There are two main types of signal which you will encounter. Main signals and distance signals. On the main signals there are several aspects which you could encounter when you're driving. The first is green, which is pretty obvious what it is. It means that you are cleared to proceed at the line speed limit. A green over yellow signal means proceed at slow speed, which is 40 km per hour unless indicated otherwise. A red or double red means stop, so you must stop at that signal. And a signal with a number indication means proceed at the indicated speed. So for example a signal with a number 6 above it, like you can see here, means you are cleared to proceed at 60 km per hour, as indicated by the signal. There are several distance signal aspects which you will also encounter. The first is double green, which means expect clear at the next main signal. So the next main signal is displaying a green aspect. The next is where you see a green light in the top right and a yellow light in the bottom left. This indicates to expect the next signal to be clear, but with a medium speed, which is likely, I believe, to be 60 to 80 kilometers per hour. The next and final aspect is double yellow, which means caution, expect stop at the next main signal. So the next main signal at this point is displaying a red aspect. It is important to note that not all of the distance signals are shaped diagonally and indeed you can now see on the screen here a square shaped distance signal. The aspects still display the same however as if it were on a diagonal signal. Another thing to note here if you look at these distance signals is that there is a white light at the top and what this white light is indicating is that it is closer to the main signal than usual. You may also encounter shunt signals which can display two aspects. The first is two horizontal red lights which means you are not clear to proceed. And the second is two diagonal white lights which means that you are cleared to proceed. 
Let's now jump into the cab of a BR101 at Mammendorf on the Munich to Augsburg route. I'm just going to demonstrate quickly departure from a station and what may happen with the signalling system when you depart, as there's a certain feature you do need to know about. After that, I'm then going to demonstrate how you would respond to a signal speed limit from the cab. Then we will discuss approaching red signals and then I will finally demonstrate the LZB system. So here we are at Mammendorf and we're ready to depart. So I'm just going to release the brakes RFB. and put the AFB system RFB. on. And now I'm just going to deliberately start very slowly to demonstrate what is known as restrictive monitoring when departing from a station and how to deal with that. If you have come to a complete stop or you travel at below 10 km per hour for more than 15 seconds then the train enters a state of what is known as restricted monitoring which you can see now with the 85 and 70 lamp illuminating alternately. While under restricted monitoring you cannot go above 45 km per hour or the emergency brakes will be applied. You can exit restricted monitoring by pressing the end key which is the PZB release button which I press now and now you can see that the 85 lamp is illuminated solidly which indicates that we're now out of restricted monitoring and we can proceed up to the maximum permitted line speed. Here we are in the cab of an ICE-2 departing Hamburg heading towards Harburg and in a moment we're going to get a restricted signal with a speed limit so the distance signal will be a green with yellow aspect with a number 8 on it which indicates that there is an upcoming speed limit of 80 km per hour at the next signal. So as we approach the distance signal just here, I'm going to press and hold the page down key, which is the PZB acknowledge button, just before we pass the signal. So I'm pressing it now. And so that is now acknowledged, and as you can see, the 85 lamp is flashing, indicating that we are under a restrictive state. At this point, the line speed would normally be going up to 120 km per hour. But because the signal speed at the next signal is only 80 km per hour, we won't be accelerating above that. And as you can see, we've got another distance signal there, with the green and yellow on it. But this time we didn't need to do anything and I didn't need to press the acknowledge key to respond to it. I only needed to do that at the first distance signal as the second one there was a reminder signal. And now you can see as we pass under this signal there is a number 8 above it with the green and the yellow. So the green and yellow means restricted speed as I mentioned earlier. And that is 40 kilometers per hour unless indicated otherwise. But at this point it had an 8 on it indicating that we are permitted to travel at 80 kilometers per hour up until we reach the next signal. Now let's consider the theory behind approaching red signals using the PZB signalling system. So in this case the PZB system works by a series of Bally's magnets which are placed at the side of the track, an example of one which you can see here as I'm showing on the screen. As you pass a double yellow distance signal, you will then know that the next main signal is displaying a red aspect. The distance signal is usually around 1 to 1.2 kilometers from the main signal. As you pass the distance signal, you pass over the first of a series of magnets known as the 1000 Hz magnet, which will only be charged if the signal is displaying a cautionary aspect. As you pass over the activated 1000 Hz magnet, the PZB alarm will go off, so you do then need to press the page down or PZB acknowledge key to acknowledge this alarm. The 1000 Hz lamp will then illuminate on the dashboard, and this indicates that the train is now in a monitored state. It is important to note that you have only 4 seconds from passing the cautionary signal to reset the PZB system with the acknowledge key. At that point you then have 23 seconds in which to slow down to 85 km per hour. So you've got to slow down pretty quickly. If after 23 seconds we are still exceeding 85 km per hour then the PZB system will apply the emergency brakes. 
After we have travelled 700 metres, the 1000 Hz lamp will then go out and the train will no longer be in a monitored state. At this point you can make a decision on what to do based on whether or not you can see the main signal. If you can see the main signal and you can see that it is displaying a clear or green aspect, then you can press the end or PZB release button, at which point you can then accelerate back up to line speed. Around 250 metres before the main signal, there is then another magnet known as the 500 Hz magnet. We must have slowed the train down to 65 km per hour before that magnet if the signal is not displaying a clear aspect, or the emergency brakes will be applied. There is no need to acknowledge the 500 Hz magnet, so we don't need to press the acknowledge button. Once we have passed the 500 Hz magnet, we then have to slow the train down to 45 km per hour within the next 153 meters. So you just need to slow down to 45 fairly quickly. And then once you've slowed down to 45 km per hour, you can then draw up to the red signal and stop safely. At the main signal itself there is one final magnet which is the 2000 Hz magnet. This magnet will always be activated when the signal is displaying a red aspect and you cannot proceed beyond this magnet while the signal is red or the emergency brakes will be applied. There are certain circumstances when you can pass this magnet such as if the signal is faulty and you have permission to pass it at which point you can then pe press the PZB override button and that will allow you to pass the signal. If that all just sounded a bit too complicated, don't worry because I'm going to demonstrate this in action in a moment in a train so then you can see exactly how you would respond. It's probably a lot easier to understand once you've seen it demonstrated than just hearing the theories you have now. Here we are in the cab of a BR146 on the Cologne to Koblenz route, travelling from Koblenz towards Cologne. And I'm about to demonstrate approaching the very signal which I was showing you a minute ago when going through the theory. And so that signal is actually on this left hand curve just coming up. There is a train blocking our path so we will need to slow down at this signal. So now you can see the double yellow signal. I recommend braking as soon as you can see it because some of these signals are close together and you want to be sure that you slow down in time. And so now I've pressed page down or the acknowledge key to acknowledge it. And at this point we've got 23 seconds to slow to below 85 kilometers per hour. So I'm now applying the brakes harder to ensure that we have slowed down in time. We've now slowed to 85 kilometers per hour, and as you can see, the signal is still red. So I'm now going to break further to below 65 kilometers per hour for the 500 Hertz magnet, which is just coming up now. At this point, as we've entered the 500 Hertz magnet, we've now got 153 meters to slow to below 45 kilometers per hour, which we have done now. And so now we can draw up to the red signal safely. And so it's just purely at your discretion from this point how quickly you wish to approach the signal as long as you do not exceed 45 kilometers per hour. As you can see, the 500 Hertz lamp has illuminated on the dashboard, which is the red lamp there below the 70. I hope that you also noticed previously at the distance signal that the yellow 1000 Hz lamp illuminated, which indicated that we had entered the restricted monitoring state. Let's now consider the same scenario approaching the same signal, but this time the main signal will clear before we get to it. So once again we're travelling at the line speed of 160 km per hour and as we round this curve I'm going to idle the power as I see the double yellow signal which I can see now and I'm going to brake immediately to make sure that I bring our speed down. Once again I press page down just before we pass the signal and held it to ensure that we acknowledge the PZB system and so we have 23 seconds to slow to below 85 kilometers per hour. So I'm now doing 80 kilometers per hour. At this point I'm going to release the brakes and look to see if I can see what aspect the signal ahead is displaying. I'm still not 100% certain so I am braking more. 
We can now see that the signal is displaying a clear aspect, so as soon as the 1000 Hz lamp goes out, which it has done now, I can now press end to release us from monitoring, and I can accelerate once again. However, you can see that the distance signal ahead is again showing a double yellow aspect, so the procedure has to be repeated once again as we pass this signal. So although I'm accelerating now, as soon as I pass this I've got to acknowledge the PZB system, which I have now done, and we've once again entered the 1000 Hz monitoring stage with the 1000 Hz lamp illuminated and the 85 light flashing. Of course we don't need to slow to below 85 km per hour because we already are doing so and in fact we're doing around 65 km per hour so as we approach the next 500 Hz magnet we're already going slow enough to ensure that the emergency brakes won't be applied. So we are getting closer to the next signal now, though it does look like that it is a green aspect. You have to release before you have passed the 500 Hz magnet. If you do not release from monitoring before you've passed that, you'll then enter full restricted mode, which means that you cannot travel at faster than 45 km per hour until you are 250 meters past the signal. So if the signal clears after you've passed the 500 Hz magnet, then you can't release at that point and you will have to continue 250 meters past the signal before the restricted mode will end. As you can see the signal there was now clear, so at this point you could accelerate back up to line speed, keeping an eye on all the signals. And I hope that this has given you a better overview of how to respond to the signalling system when travelling uh, in PZB mode. So in a moment we're going to take a quick look at the LZB mode of signalling and then that will be the conclusion of this tutorial. As you enter an LZB zone, you will see an LZB sign which indicates that you've entered the zone. However, you'll also get several cab indications which I will demonstrate in a moment. When you're in an LZB zone, the driving is a lot more automated and in fact the train can manage all of the speed changes by itself and even if you have a red signal, the train can actually stop at the red signal without you having to do anything at all. So now we're going to take a look in the cab of an ICE3 here on the Munich to Augsburg route and demonstrate what happens when you enter an LZB zone and then after that we're going to have a look at what happens uh, with the speed changes and then after that we're going to take a look at what will happen if we approach a red signal in the LZB zone. Here we are in the cab of an ICE3 accelerating up to 120 km per hour through Augsburg Hounstetterstrasse station on the way towards Munich. As you can see there is a wire in the middle of the track but we are still under PZB mode as the 85 lamp is illuminated. Though in a moment we will be changing to LZB mode and as soon as we do, which we have done now, you heard the noise in the cab and you see the 85 lamp has gone out and the lamp on the very right, which it says U on it, has illuminated which indicates that we are now operating under LZB mode another thing which is now activated next to the speedometer on the left is this distance measurement indicator which shows the distance to the next speed limit with the 100 in the speedometer indicating what that speed limit will be so we're now 750 meters from a 100 km per hour speed limit in a moment you'll see the train will start braking itself and as you can see there's now a red light that's illuminated on the dashboard which says G on it which indicates that the train is now braking for that 100 km per hour speed limit the train will generally slow to around uh, 4 km per hour below the speed limit at this point. And you'll also notice now if I move the cruise control handle, which is the one on the left there, all the way up, the bug on the outside of the speedometer does not increase. This is because the speeds are now automatically managed, so you can't set it to a speed above the speed limit. In a moment the speed limit will go up and then you will see the bug increase as the train accelerates towards the new speed limit and you will also see the distance measurement indicator change as we pass the next speed board. So you can see there 
that we're now one kilometre away roughly from the next speed limit. One important thing to note about this distance indicator is that with the bars it can only go up to 4,000 which is four kilometres from the next speed limit. If the next speed limit is above that you will then get a digital display reading in thousands of metres up to 9,900 a number will appear here indicating the distance up to the next speed limit. If the next speed limit is further than 9,900 metres or 9.9 .9 kilometres away then it will not show on the distance measurement. It will just stick at 9,900 metres until it registers that the next speed change is below 9.9 .9 kilometres away. As you can see we've now just passed the next speed change and the speed limit has gone up to 240 kilometers per hour. You can also see on the display there it went to 5,400 meters indicating how far away we are from the next speed change. And so as you can see the bug has increased and we are now accelerating towards the new speed limit. We're now going to jump slightly further on the journey just to, slow the, just to show the train slowing down um, for another speed restriction. Now slightly further along on the journey, the current speed limit is 240 km per hour, though it is shortly dropping to 200 km per hour, and as you can see the G has illuminated and the train is now braking for the 200 km per hour speed limit, and it will break down to around 196 km per hour before we reach that speed change. So as you can see the train is now just below 200 km per hour, and the speed change is just coming up. And so we've now just passed the speed change there. As you can see this does take a lot of load from the driver as the train is basically driving itself. However if you did need to stop at a station in an LZB zone you do have to do that manually. The LZB system will not stop you at a station unless the uh, signal at the end of a platform happened to be red. Now let's consider what happens if we approach a red signal when we're travelling in the LZB zone. Here we are in the cab of the ICE 3 once again having just left Augsburg and we are already under the LZB system as you can see and the speed limit has just gone up to 280 km per hour so the train is currently accelerating. However there is a train ahead which is blocking our path and so in a moment you'll see what happens as we approach cautionary signals and how the train responds to that. You can now see that the speed display has dropped to three zeros on the speedometer and the train is starting to slow down. This is indicating that we do have a red signal ahead. And as you can see in the distance display, that is showing us just how far away the next red signal is, which is around one and a half kilometers at the minute, which is probably about a mile. And as you can see, the train is gradually slowing down for that signal. The red bug is slowly dropping as well, but as you can see, the speedometer needle is dropping below that red bug by about 20 kilometers per hour. So as you keep hearing the beeps going off there, indicating that the signal is still showing a cautionary aspect and the train is still slowing down for that signal. In fact, you can see the train ahead which is blocking our path. It's uh, a broken down train in a rather inconvenient place. However, we will stop before it. As you can see our speed is coming off quickly now as we come towards the red signal. And the train is coming to a perfect stop just before the signal itself. 
So that was a great demonstration of just what happens when you reach a red signal on this section. What I would do now is I would cut the power and then once the train ahead had moved and our signal had cleared I would then increase the power gradually to give us a, a gentle start once again and then the uh, AFB system will take over and the train will automatically drive itself once again until the next speed change or signal aspect. One final thing to demonstrate is what happens when you reach the end of the LZB section and then that will be the end of the tutorial. Here we are in the cab of an ICE2 approaching Munich pacing on the Munich to Augsburg route and we will shortly be approaching the end of an LZB section. So the speed limit which we've just been travelling at was 200 km per hour and we've now got to slow down to 100 km per hour which the LZB system is now doing. You should also see here that there's a yellow light that's illuminated on the dashboard which says END and what this light is indicating is that we are approaching the end of the LZB section and indeed it will be at the next signal I believe where the LZB will end. In fact I was slightly incorrect there, the LZB has just ended already and so as you can see the 85 lamp has illuminated. And so at this point we now have full control over the train ourselves. In this case the speed limit is dropping to 100 miles, sorry kilometers per hour. So we have to slow down a bit for that there now. I think that's pretty much demonstrated everything with both the PZB and LZB systems. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I know it's been quite long, it's been quite difficult to put together and explain so much information in this video. But I do really hope that it has helped you uh, to understand the German signalling system better and just how to drive trains in Germany and uh, I hope that you'll be able to play some scenarios successfully with the safety systems turned on. If you did enjoy the video then please don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget you can also find me on Facebook and the link for my Facebook page will be in the description of this video. And lastly, if you really do appreciate the work that I do and would like to support me financially, then please don't hesitate to visit my Patreon page. The link for that is also in the description of this video. Again, thanks for watching.